This is the roof section of the InterNACHI Home Inspection Standards of Practice course. A home inspector is not required to walk upon any roof surface, even if that's a flat roof only 10 or 12 feet above the ground. It's dangerous to walk upon the roof. It's dangerous to, walk, to use a ladder. The inspector is not required to predict the service life expectancy of a roof system either. It's impossible to predict that. Some inspectors guess the age of the roof cover covering materials, but that's not required according to the standards of practice. What is required according to the standards of practice? Well, the inspector is required to inspect from the ground level or eaves, <clears throat> the roof covering materials, the gutters, the downspouts, vents, flashing, skylights, chimney, and other roof penetrations, and the general structure of the roof from the readily accessible panels, doors, and stairs. Home inspector should describe the type of roof covering materials and report as in need of correction, observe indications of active roof leaks. What if, as a home inspector, I see watermarks on the ceiling of the second floor, um, in the corner, near the gutter that may have overflowed, or maybe there's a roof leak or some, something, I don't know. Well, the watermarks are observed indications of active roof leaks. <clears throat> if it was an active leak and w was repaired, likely the homeowner would paint the watermarks and patch the drywall that was damaged by the water intrusion problem. If it's still there during a home inspection and you see it and you deem it to be a, a problem, you should put it in your inspection report. A picture is worth a thousand words as well. And further evaluation and correction should be recommended. But what if, how do you know if it's active or not? What if someone like an uncle or a real estate agent or the seller says, oh, we fixed that? Well, you should have documentation of that repair by a qualified roofer, yes? So I would make that recommendation as well. If there isn't any, or if there isn't time for the homeowner to retrieve that information, it's a good idea to recommend as in need of correction, any observed indications of a roof leak, whether it's active or inactive. And it's impossible to tell whether it's active or inactive unless it's actually dripping. And that's rare when you see a, a plumbing leak actively dripping or a water leak, roof leak actively dripping. What you, what you usually see is watermarks. And since you're not required to use an infrared camera or a moisture meter, um, and if it's not accessible to you to touch, um, you may not be able to determine that kind of degree, whether it's active, wet, moist, um, damp. So if you see anything that looks like a roof leak, it's good to report it as in need of correction, any observed indications of an active roof leak. Okay. Roof covering material. The inspector is required to inspect the roof covering materials not the roof system. There's a difference. The roof system includes many components that are not readily visible or accessible. For example, shingle fastening or nailing is part of the roof system, but it is not readily visible. Underlayment is part of the roof system, but it is not readily visible. Sheathing and its fastening are part of the roof system for sure, but are not readily visible or easily visible. So when inspecting, making observations, taking notes, and writing the inspection report, a home inspector need only to inspect and comment upon the roof covering materials. The International Residential Code refers to roof covering materials as material that is installed and secured to and cover the roof deck according to the manufacturer's recommendation in order to protect the building or the structure. The inspection image here is a picture of the roof covering material. So be careful. It's not, recommended, it's not recommended that you use the word system. And stay safe. While the standards of practice requires home inspectors to inspect the roof, how this is accomplished depends upon the inspector's comfort level. Many inspectors never walk on a roof. In many cases, the safest way to examine a roof is from the ground. You may consider using a ladder extended up to the gutter at the eaves, 
but using a ladder is dangerous, and a fall from a ladder could be fatal. We have a safe practices for a home inspector's course and a ladder safety training course if you choose to learn more about being safe. An inspection of the roof covering materials helps identify the type of material installed, like slate, asphalt shingle, wood shake, roll roofing, etc. Based on a visual only inspection, a determination may be made as to the general condition of the roof covering materials, including observed indications of possible defects. Gutters and downspouts. Inspecting the inside of gutters may help provide additional information about the condition of the roof covering materials. For example, there may be excessive roof covering materials or aggregate, the little stones, inside the gutters if um, the, the roof is deteriorated or damaged in some way. But also, you can get that accumulation of aggregate when a brand new roof is installed, so be careful. Water from the roof reaches the ground through gutters and downspouts or by flowing directly off the roof. Because downspouts create concentrated sources of water in the landscape, where they discharge is important. Downspouts should not discharge where water flow will go directly over a walkway, a driveway, or stairs. The downspouts on a hillside building should discharge on the downhill side of the building. The force of water leaving a downspout is sometimes great enough to damage the adjacent ground, so some protection at grade level, such as a splash block or a paved draining chute, is needed. In urban areas, it's better to drain downspouts to an underground stormwater drainage system if there is one, or underground to discharge at a lower grade away from the buildings. All gutters should be kept clean, and they should slope uniformly without sags to downspouts. Drainage without gutters and downspouts can damage the exterior water with overflow. If the house has no gutters or downspouts, carefully check the exterior walls for signs of water damage. The inspection image here is of a downspout diverter pipe that is crushed and actually closed at its termination end and that's a defect that should be corrected. Flashing. Vents, flashing, skylights, chimney, and other roof penetrations can be a significant problem because they are all engineered holes in the roof covering material. If not properly installed or maintained, they may allow rainwater to enter the sheathing and or attic space, water intrusion. Check the flashing in the joints around all roof penetrations, including drains, soil stacks, chimneys, skylights, hatchways, antenna mountings, and other roof mounted elements. This inspection image is of a vent pipe from a kitchen sink, and the home inspector did not observe any indications of a defect at the flashing at the time of the inspection. A leaking skylight is a common experience. From outside, watch the glazing for cracks or breaks, loosening of the flashing or rusting or decaying frames. Skylights should be checked from the inside too. So don't be surprised if your skylight has a leak right after your home inspection. But remember, a home inspector is not responsible for future weather events. Whew. The inspection here is of a skylight with flashing on its left side improperly installed with flashing components missing and duct tape installed. This is a defect that needs to be corrected. General structure of the roof. Inspecting the roof structure is best done from inside the attic space with safe access. It is an important part of the inspection. Inspectors must check the underside of the sheathing for signs of moisture intrusion looking closely at the roof penetrations we mentioned earlier for signs of flashing failure, um, obvious signs of structural problems such as split cracked rafters or improperly cut roof truss components. A home inspector should check the general roof structure of the roof from readily accessible panels, doors or stairs because roof coverings and roof covering materials can wear out, break, rust, crack, detach, blow off, or otherwise fail 
and expose the roof deck and structural components beneath to moisture intrusion and damage, this area is important to check. The inspector is not required, again, to walk on any roof surface, not required to predict the life expectancy of the roof covering materials, not required to inspect underground downspout diverted drainage pipes, not required to um, remove snow or ice, not required to move insulation, not required to inspect antenna, satellite dishes, lightning arresters, the icing equipment, not required to walk on any roof areas that appear in the inspector's opinion to be unsafe, not required to perform a water test or warranty a roof, and not required to conf confirm proper flashing or installation of any roof covering materials. Predicting life expectancy of any component can be very risky and roof covering materials make that task more difficult still. A standard asphalt shingle roof, for example, has a lifespan that is dependent upon prevailing weather, overhanging trees, the number of layers of the covering, and adequate ventilation, to name but a few factors. Asphalt or composition shingles should have a service life from 15 to 40 years, depending on shingle quality, insulation, and maintenance. That's a huge a span of time. When they begin to lose their granule coverings and start to curl, the shingles should be replaced. No more than two layers of asphalt shingles should be in place at any one time. If a second layer of asphalt shingles has been applied, check to see if all the flashing materials of the first layer were removed and replaced with new flashing for the second layer. Underground pipes. Underground downspout terminations fall into the if I can't see it, I can't report it category. Often the drainage system has failed due to silting up, roof system blockages, or collapsed pipework. It's also unsafe to walk most roofs that are wet, icy, snow covered, or mossy. Removing snow, ice, or debris to inspect the roof is hazardous and it's not required. Inspecting antenna, satellite dishes, and similar items is not required, but a home inspector could check their attachment to the fixed systems of the roof, such as chimneys and through the roof mountings. A home inspector is not required to perform a water test in order to evaluate or diagnose a roof water leak or moisture intrusion problem. The inspector shall report as in need of correction observe indications of active roof leaks. It may not be possible to find an active roof leak, such as an active water drip coming from the roof covering materials. But there may be indications that you observe during a home inspection that provides evidence of an active or prior roof leak. So look for signs of dampness and watermarks. Your hand is a sensitive instrument to help find and confirm moisture or wet materials. Watermarks could be an indication of an active roof leak or a roof leak that occurred in the past. It is recommended to identify, describe, and report upon any indications of a roof leak that may have happened in the past. This inspection image was taken during the inspection of the attic space. The inspector wrote, I observe indications of a roof leak. There is a water capturing rag wrapped around the main vent stack pipe. There's a bucket to catch the water drips. Active, actively dripping water was not observed at the time of the inspection, but it may be an active roof leak. There may have been a roof leak in the past. I recommend asking the homeowner to explain the indications of the roof leak. An active roof leak is a major defect and correction and further valuation is recommended. That's a pretty good inspection narrative. fastening or installation. It is not required for a home inspector to inspect the fastening of the roof covering material or the roof structure, sheathing, or deck. Fastening is beyond the scope of a home inspection. It is impossible to inspect the fastening. Home inspectors are not required to inspect and confirm proper installation according to manufacturer's recommendations. Home inspectors are not required to inspect according to the building code. 
home inspectors are not code inspectors. So to learn about how to inspect a roof, take Internet at Cheese online courses that are free to members at our education page, which is natchee.org slash education. Let me take you there. And use the search field. Let's say I want to look for roof. Well, we have a lot of nationally accredited roof courses that are free and online to Internet members. We highly recommend taking the video-based course, 10 Steps to Performing a Roof Inspection Course. That is a short and sweet training course. It's really good. So we highly recommend that.